Hi, I'm Katie Kennedy Freeman. I'm an agricultural economist in the food and agriculture global practice at the World Bank. I've been at the bank for about three years working on issues of agriculture and energy. Prior to that, I worked at the Earth Institute at Columbia University, working in a mechanical engineering lab thinking about some of the same issues. At the bank currently, we've been thinking about the nexus between agriculture and energy and the collaboration between the energy and the agriculture global practices at the bank. One of the issues that we're thinking about is technology. We're thinking about this technology at a number of different scales, at the global scale, at the national scale, and then at the farmer scale. So globally, there's a need for additional research and development thinking about the types of technologies that can be used for the agriculture energy nexus. One of the roles that we have as the World Bank is working with country governments, helping to establish local markets for these types of technologies. Even when these type of technologies exist in global markets, there are places where, um, where the national markets haven't yet been established and there's a need for support and um, capacity building in order to help establish some of these markets. And then third, at the field level, um, there's a barrier, there are barriers to use, even when these do exist nationally, like ha high capital costs of the investment, scales of the technologies of operation, risk aversions of the farmers, and sources of financing, like the lack of rural credit in some of these areas. In addition to technology, one of the other barriers we see is the information and awareness at the government level and also at the field level. These exist from two separate sides. We have the energy for agriculture and then we have the agriculture for energy. So in terms of energy for agriculture, more information is necessary to determine how agricultural production can be made more efficient with better, cheaper energy inputs and how the energy inputs in agriculture could be cleaner. When we're talking about that, we're talking about things like solar for agriculture. We're talking about solar irrigation. We're talking about solar heating. We're talking about solar thermal. Um, we also have agriculture for energy. So more information is also needed to examine the potential uses of agricultural byproducts for the production of on-farm energy generation. Knowledge of these things is needed both at the national level and awareness is needed at the community and farm level. So when we're talking about um, agriculture for energy, we're talking about the byproducts of farms. So for example, the waste from a dairy farm, which could be used in a biodigester and then used to generate electricity. Um, so we're really looking at it from both sides and information, more information is needed at the national level and at the community level about these two sides of the nexus. It's a collaboration between agriculture and energy experts. That too is at an international, national, and local level. Agronomists frequently don't have the expertise necessary to examine the types of technologies we're talking about. They are not electricians, for example. And on the other side, on the energy side, we see the same thing that experts in energy and energy technology are not agronomists. And so these two sides in the field need to speak together to talk about how these technologies can really be put into place on the farms. At a national level, this is true of ministries as well. The Ministry of Agriculture is not always speaking to the Ministry of Energy, and so the policies that they have are not necessarily collaborative policies. They're not ones that focus at the nexus of agriculture and energy. They're ones that take into account the specific needs of the energy sector in isolation or the agriculture sector in isolation. We see this too at the donor level. Even within the World Bank, we are making um, strides to ensure that the agriculture global practice is speaking to the energy global practice, that we're trying to utilize the expertise that each have in order to build on the other instead of building an energy project in isolation, um, not really understanding all of the nuanced uh, nuances that go into an agricultural value chain, for example, or on the agriculture side, not really understanding things like sizing of the technology for some of these 
businesses and improperly sizing technology so that um, the, the most efficient or most effective energy is not produced. Financing issues around the agriculture energy nexus are complex, and we're seeing this as a bank working in Latin America, working in Africa, working globally, trying to implement programs that have these two things together. One thing, where one area where we've been successful is in public-private partnerships and helping to provide financing mechanisms that are sustainable in the wrong, long run through a collaboration between the public sector and the private sector. In these collaborations, both the public and the private sector benefit from engaging in the nexus. So the public sector um, helps to create an enabling environment with regulations and part financial support helps to encourage private uptake of technologies and broader market for technologies, whereas the private sector obviously benefits from additional products and from having some of these technologies available within the local markets. Um, that's more at a national scale, so thinking about how to encourage these public-private partnerships at a national scale. In the rural areas, we've seen some success with microfinance and rural credit. So at a smaller scale, rural credit agencies and microfinance institutions can help ease the burden of the upfront capital investments needed for these technologies. Some of these technologies save money in, in a very short amount of time. So some of the payback periods for these technologies can be a matter of months only. But the upfront capital investment needed in order to purchase some of these equipment is so great that even though the payback period is maybe only six months or eight months, there's a barrier for smaller businesses or smaller farms to be able to purchase this equipment. So a rural credit agency or a microfinance agency can help regularize and smooth some of the payments over time and help these businesses and farms gain access to these technologies. We've begun thinking more about the agriculture energy nexus because we're seeing more and more demand from our clients for these things. Speaking specifically about Latin America and about Africa, in Latin America, we're seeing more of a demand for a collaboration between the ministries of agriculture and energy in the agriculture energy nexus to help drive agricultural growth and agricultural innovation while at the same time mitigating or reducing greenhouse gas emissions from the agriculture sector. In Africa, we're seeing demand from country governments, but for a different reason. In Africa, um, comparatively, the rates of rural electrification are much, much lower. And so agribusinesses and on-farm processing don't have access to energy. And where they do, they're spending, um, they're spending a lot of money on um, inefficient types of energy. The World Bank as itself is a financing organization. Um, so we work with country governments in order to provide loans and grants for a number of different types of programs and policies. Um, in the agriculture energy nexus, we're doing two things currently. We're using the investment lending that we have, so the, um, the funding that's coming out of the institutions going directly to the Ministry of Finance, which is then used at the line ministry level to fund national level programs. And then we also work um, with some of our trust funds within the World Bank to do analytical work to help country governments um, understand the, uh, the programs and policies around the agriculture energy nexus and some more specific things. Um, I'm going to give a couple of examples of how we do this. So when thinking about financing, one of the things that we've done in Mexico and had a lot of success with is partnering with a private sector institution at the government level to provide subsidies for these types of technologies at a larger scale. So we have a collaboration with the Ministry of Agriculture with SAGARPA in Mexico for the Sustainable Rural Development Project, or a project that we call FERCO. Um, this project 
uh, works at a national level and provides, it publishes calls for technology. So it has a list of types of technologies that are available within this program, publishes calls, and agribusinesses from across the country can apply to receive subsidies for these technologies. The technologies include large-scale um, solar thermal, they include solar irrigation, they include large-scale biodigesters. They've so far placed thousands of these types of technologies with these subsidies across the country in Mexico. One co-benefit that this project has had has been to create a national market for these types of technologies. So not only are these agribusinesses receiving and using these types of energy, they're saving money and they're reducing their greenhouse gas emissions through cleaner types of energy, but the placement of these technologies within agribusinesses across the country has generated a large market for these agribusinesses. This has had a trickle-down effect. So these large-scale agribusinesses are adopting and using these technologies, and we're now seeing smaller agribusinesses take up these technologies and be able to purchase them in a private market without a subsidy. In Africa currently, we have a team um, working on a study called Powering Agriculture in Africa. It's a study that's been fun funded by the um, by SMAP, the Energy Sector Management Assistance Program at the World Bank, a trust-funded program working in energy. And what they're doing is thinking about how agriculture could help rural electrification. It's widely accepted that rural electrification and energy helps agricultural production. Um, some of these agribusinesses, what they need in order to increase their level of processing or increase the value of their, their outputs is energy. What is not widely accepted and what this study is investigating is whether or not agriculture can help incite or encourage rural electrification. They're doing that through looking at anchor loads. Another study we're doing, a collaboration with FAO, also funded by SMAP, is a study that we're calling Energizing Agriculture Throughout Latin America. This study is examining some key energy intensive value chains in Latin America and looking at how to make them more energy efficient um, and more economically efficient. The output of this will be several case studies and a tool which governments, private sector, NGOs, um, and uh, local businesses can use to help determine what types of energy they could be using in order to cut their costs, cut their greenhouse gas emissions, um, or, uh, and make their businesses more efficient. Mm -hmm.